go, take it? We're, we're going to go with the uh, City Council meeting, Redevelopment Successor Agency Financial Regular Meeting. Today, Wednesday the 19th, I've got 644. 544. Roll call, please. Mayor Hurtado is absent. Mayor Pritam Pacheco? Here. Council Member Escobar? Absent. Absent. Council Member Hodge? Here. Council Member Real? Here. We have a quorum, sir. Thank you. Public comments. We're going to go with this is a time for public to address the city council on closed session items only. The mayor will recognize you, and when you come to the microphone, please state your name and place of residence for the record. While members of the public are encouraged to participate, it is unlawful to disturb and delay the council meeting with personal or slanderous remarks. The city council is prohibited by state law from taking any actions dis or discussing items not on the printed agenda. Please direct your questions and comments to the council. Is there anybody? We have no. We have no comments. So then we were going to adjourn to closed session and discuss one litigation item. Thank you. We're going to call, call the session back to order. This is a regular session of the City Council of Calexico, Calexico Redevelopment, Successor Agency, Calexico Finance Authority. Call to order. Roll call. Mayor Tado is absent. Mayor Pretend Pacheco? Here. Councilmember Escobar? Here. Councilmember Hodge? Here. Councilmember Real? Here. We have a quorum, sir. Thank you. Pledge of Allegiance, please. Uh, Mr. Real could, you, Real, could you lead us? All rise. Ready, begin. I, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. To the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Amen. Oops. Thank you. Invocation by Pastor Eduardo Cesena. Pleasure to have you. First Christ Community Church. Pastor Cecilia. These pros, approval the agenda, please. So moved. Second. Aye. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Pass. Announcements. These proceedings may be viewed by the City of Calexico website, www.calexico.ca.gov, the Friday following the City Council meeting. No presentations, so public comments and appearances, public appearances. I'm sorry, reporting out on the closed session? Um, Correct. Uh, we had one item closed session, had a discussion, but no reportable actions were taken. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Campos. Public comments. This is the time for the public to address the City Council on any item not appearing on the agenda. It is within the subject matter jurisdiction of the City Council. The Mayor will recognize you, and when you come to the microphone, Please state your name and place of residence for the record. While members of the public are encouraged to participate, it is unlawful to disturb or delay the council meeting with personal or slanderous remarks. 
If the item you wish to comment on is a consent agenda, please comment now. The City Council is prohibited by state, state law from taking action or discussing items not included on the printed agenda. If the item you wish to come in on is on public portion on the agenda, we will take your comment when we get to that item on the agenda. Please direct your questions and comments to the City Council. First, is there any, uh, any comments by the City Council? Yes. Mr. Ben Horton? No public first. Go ahead. We're still. Thank you, Mr. Horton. Testing. Okay. Ben Horton, Calexico, California, Chairman of the Economic Commission. Louder, please. Ben Horton, resident. Is that loud enough, Mr. Hodge? It is now. My, Thank you my very much, sir. Aid is, is in town. Okay. These are discussion points that I wanted to bring up in reference to some points that we brought forth in the uh, last Economic Commission meeting. These are just discussion points. One of the things we talked about is licensed contractors, general and specialized contractors. There have been certain contractors that have been operating as general contractors when they're specialized. This is something that we should look into, also look into to make sure that they have a business license to operate here in the city. Point, the one point. <clears throat> the Chamber of Commerce was part of our meeting, and one of the things <clears throat> we're saying that we're moving, at least on the Economic Commission and Finance Advisory, to have a more closer relationship with the Chamber because they are infinite part of the city, and by working together with them, we can move the city forward and have better activities. And one of the things I think, if I can push forward, that the, the council should try to make some of these mixers that businesses in the city put together to promote their businesses to show the support for them. I agree. Thank you, Mr. Harch. And I'm going to give a little point. This is something that I put together, and uh, we have several teachers up here. Summer school is going to be ending. Today I had a discussion with uh, uh, Metropolitan uh, Theaters, which is the one that controls the Calexico 10 Theater. I, I was going to read it the way she sent it to me. The last four summer kids film mo series movies for free admission if the, you have a community calendar, I don't know what that means, but I'm going to get a clarification, and I'll, I'll, we'll see if we can put it on the chambers or get it back to the city. And this is going to be something for our kids to get, let's say, uh, to go to the movies free. They have these series going on now, and they're going to have them free if they bring their community calendar. I think that's... Uh, adults pay $2, sir. Okay. And the adults pay $2, but the kids are going to be free. So you could have a, a nice little movies. And this is something to show that the uh, economic and the chamber are working together to have activities for everybody. And um, I'll, if there's more clarification, I'll get that and get it to the necessary parties. So, and also, uh, for the uh, Economic and Financial Commission, we're hoping that with the consent of the, uh, the, uh, the, the council, we can give a presentation in the September, one of the September meetings to show you what, where we're at and our thoughts and our, how we're moving forward in September. If that's okay, we can be put on the yes. agenda to give a presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Horton. Thank you. Ms. Carmen Durazo. He went a little over. Commission and History Commission. 
Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Kerm. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Uh, Chief Reggie Gomez. Good evening, uh, Mr. Mayor Pro Tem, Honorable Council. As a quick update, for all, in, for all in attendance, the uh, Calexico Police Department has been conducting a number of community-oriented events in the city. Our, our last event was Operation Chill, yeah. and that was a partnership between all our local 7-Elevens, the Calexico Police Department, and the Camarena Library. The library was the host site for this event. Our thanks goes to the uh, Community Services Director, Sandra Toller, sitting back there. We also partnered with the Camarena Library to uh, hold Coffee with a Cop. The partnership was with our local Starbucks, Collection Police Department, and again, the Common Inner Library. Sandra Toller has also requested participation from the Collection Police Department when the Angels event was held, again, at the Common Inner Library, and we gladly participated. So as an exp expression of our gratitude and our shared concern for programs of outreach to our community, I'd like to present Sandra Toller with this certificate from the Collection Police right. Department, if you'd like to come up and accept this. Let me read this real quick. The Calexico Police Department expresses our sincere appreciation for your participation in our community events. Thank you so much. Thank you. Photo up, photo up. This is my Harry Potter glasses. <laughs> That's it. Thank you very much. Good job. Next. Mr. Jose Vargas. Completed, and we're still paying. We're still being responsible, and. Pain, and uh, we need solutions to this problem, because. Thank you. 
creation of a group Uh, we need solutions. You know, we've been in this uh, bubbling syndrome here, getting together in ad hoc, hoc committees. We come in since 2008 to the city council to request help because... Help on what, sir? See, the project is, is being completed about 50% of it, and we're paying on a $50 million bond. You know, there was uh, resolutions passed by the city, floated a $50 million bond, which was great. You know, I was going to contribute to the school district also. That community supposed to pay $6.5 million, which I don't know if, whether it was paid or not up to this point. And uh, in 2008, I requested, Mr. Villa was here, out of the $8.5 million that had been spent in the infrastructure, according to Capanica, the, the administrator of the CFD, 2005-1, I asked him to the city council members to agendize to come plot another bond for $8.5 million and come up with a $50 million bond. Therefore, we pay on $8.5 million, not the $50 million, $50 million because the project was not completed, what it was offered. No help from the city council. And there we're left with an, an abandoned, neglected project. Our recreation center <clears throat> is a dump. And the city is not complying with its responsibilities, its civic responsibilities to the community of Calexico. We need some solutions to this problem. We need help. We're paying for, for something we're not getting. Mr. Vargas, the 14 million that was paid up front was to pay for sewers, sidewalks, streets, lighting, paying the school district $5 million. That money has already been encumbered. We're paying, Hearthstone is paying 14 million on that. That is what the you're being charged. That is what the cost was for that CFD. The $50 so everything has been paid for. It was for the infrastructure. We was to be constructed first. The streets, the sidewalks, for the whole four phases. Only two phases have been completed up to this point. We shouldn't be paying on, on the whole project. Yeah. That's the thing. That should have been done, the infrastructure should have been done first, not use the money to build the first mm -hmm. phase and then sell mm -hmm. the houses and then build another yes. phase. No, I understand. B but the issue, Mr. Vargas, the nation, the whole nation went down. Housing market was Depression. blown away, blown up. We People know. were losing their homes. That is what has happened, we not just to Calexico. It, it was to everybody, not just Calexico. But still, if you don't get, if you endeavor or embark in a, in a project and you don't get the proper surety bond, which is a project for the community, you, you have to get the proper surety bonds to complete the project. If you don't, you're still responsible. It's coming out of your pocket to finish the project. That's why I'm asking, you know, civilly here to make proper appropriations of the funds, charge the, the Grand Plaza the $6.4 million that they owe the city, charge them the service fees, which you're not charging the, the service fees, charge everybody the service fees, undeveloped, developed land, because we're not, you have left us in a disadvantage. I, th I think we understand. Could, could you, in 30 seconds, could you give us a wrap-up? 
we have to act responsible, uh, you know, professionally about helping us and waving, waving like you've been doing the Grand Plaza, the 2013 Dutch 1CFD, whatever it's called. You can wave us, give us a break. The, the city council is the legislative body of the CFD 2005-1. They have the power, the civil power to help us waive this, this uh, CFD special taxes and service fees, which supposedly, according to some paper that, that was issued by City of Calexico uh, on some ta tax administration uh, department, the, the service fee should have end uh, June 30th of this year. Thank you, Mr. Vargas. You're welcome. <clears throat> Mr. James Beaver. Let's use uh, the one on this side so that we, everybody can hear, please. Andy can't hear very well, so. <laughs> so uh, James Bieber, a police commissioner for Calexico and a resident of Calexico. Uh, we haven't had a meeting since um, election, actually December 2016. And I understand it's very important that DOJ wants us to start meeting because basically we're a buffer agency for the police department as far as uh, civil complaints. Um, I talked to Gabby a couple of weeks ago, a month ago. She said she'd gotten the applications that all of the city council here has appointed a, a member, a commissioner. Uh, it was just the application process that was missing and just like to remind the city council to please look into the individuals you appointed and make sure they're complying uh, and they have the time. It's only one meeting a month. I think it's the last Wednesday of every month that we meet in the chambers. Uh, but this has just been something that's been neglected going on. We haven't had one meeting. It's going about nine months from now. So I would have just thought, act, ask the council to look into this with the city manager and the secretary. Thank you very Thank much. You, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Beaver. Mr. Kim? Good evening. Uh, thank you for the you're joking. <laughs> and, uh, but I have, before I speak, I need a favor from the council to what uh, the public speaks. Please don't interrupt. Because they have own rhythm to plan to say, and you guys to interrupt it, or sometimes I've been inter interrogating by the, the school board member when I was public. It's, it's blocking the people the way they want to talk and they lost in the middle. Please, we are here to try to get everything best of the democratic process. So please don't interrupt the public when they talk. When they finish it, you, you get a question, whatever, please do the so. And uh, I wasn't gonna say, but uh, probably the council was con uh, have a wrong idea and wrong information. So I need to clarify on those uh, Hearthstone project, CFT. The Miller lose the law, they obligate to spend all the money first to do that project. In case of that, they uh, issue the bond for the infrastructure, they supposed to finish the infrastructure first, then do any, uh, build a house and everything. Before do they anything, they have to spend their money in that purpose. And the city of Calexico let them do without that obligations. So that's the causing all the problem. People probably, they, they've been convinced that, oh, charity bonds are going to be covered. But again, the law is for sure to get service for the community. That's why the infrastructure, the bond money is supposed to spend it. If they spend it on all the infrastructure, 
But now these days, uh, uh, people can, uh, they, don't, they don't need to come here to complain the, oh, excuse me, all the issues. Because uh, Sherry Bond is, is, been, uh, is not paid enough. So what happens? The La Jolla Palm Bluebird has been, has been not built. It. All of the streets are not built. It. That's why infrastructure has not been done. Even the street is half of the size. That's why they've been in trouble. But uh, cities try to say, oh, you guys already, the paper that you guys already agreed it. But they agreed to full project of the infrastructure. And then they not agreed neither. The owner, only one person to uh, vote yes under that project. The people paying the taxes, they, not, they never had a chance to vote. That's a big issue in the Melo Luzman and the Californians. But anyhow, the city of Calexico, if they follow the rules, follow the law process, it wouldn't be having have, have any trouble with the Hearthstone people. But that is the big issues from the city of Calexico. City of Calexico reliable, reliable on those because they are they are authority to do supervising, to, uh, implementing all the laws. It, they didn't do it. Thirty seconds, Mr. Kim. Okay, and also. I'm, I'm congratulating the city council member, the diligence to the, without everybody going to vacation, without going vacation to come here to collect the money from the community. And I'm going to show how much the council member, his compa system is there. I'm going to through the backup document by the city, city council. I'm going to show them you guys been sold out. That's what I can say. That. Because of course, I, I, I don't know the, what kind of the sold out. What kind of benefit do they have? Or maybe they, they have own compass system. As I'm going to show the later on in the, during the process, I'm going to show that. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kim. Mr. Jesse Gallardo. City Council, good evening. So the reason I'm here, I'm representing Great Alternatives, a, low, uh, a non-profit organization from Fresno, California, and we do solar panels for low-income households. If they own their home and they make less, less than $65,000 a year, they might be able to qualify for literally free solar systems, no cost to them ever, zero dollars. They don't have to pay for anything except on the day of installation, they give us some food, water, and access to the restroom. And the reason I'm here, it's because we've done, in two years, we've been able to do two, six systems in Calexico. Because the fees are somewhat high, we have to get funding from other places. And the reason I'm here is because I want to discuss or add to the agenda some future date about reducing or, if possible, waiving those fees for solar panels since, again, we're a nonprofit. We work with a lot of uh, low-income communities in California, basically, mainly in California and it's free to those that qualify and may use that system. We're talking about 50 to 80 to 90% savings on their electricity bills uh, for free, as long as they qualify for the program. We're completely no, no, non-profit, meaning that we don't make a profit, so I think the city would be a great of, of great help if you guys are able to discuss into waiving them or making them less. That's good. We could make uh, contact with the city manager. Maybe we could make... Uh an appointment with him to get uh, some information from you. Perfect. Um, can I do that now? Can I get an appointment? What's your name? Jesse. Oh, yeah. No. Uh, do you want to? Yes. <clears throat> do you guys work with um, businesses that uh, also, do you guys do for businesses that don't make 65000 a year? Here, here in the maybe valley. The, the city needs some uh, <laughs> solar panels. No, here in the valley, we're not allowed to yet, but we, have, we do do business accounts too for businesses that employ a certain amount of people. We're able to help them out, at least not here yet, but eventually we will. Anything else, Mr. Joker? Uh, we're good. <laughs> any, any Thank you, questions? Jesse. Thank, Thank you. you. Anybody else, uh, Ms. Uh, Garcia? Anybody else? Yes. 
When we get to item two, you'll get to speak. We're not yet. They can go now. Well, let's let's do the let's do the council comments and then uh, on meetings we'll start with Mr. Hodge first. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. Pro tem, uh, I'm probably going to be the one that speaks the longest tonight. I do have several, so please bear with me and don't tell me to stop. Okay. Number one, uh, along with Benny Horton, I want the bid in the housing department to meet with economic development and financial advisor commission. Uh, we need to be doing that on bid. And uh, as far as I understand, we are out of compliance with our, our own ordinance. Uh, since uh, they pay fees, they should be operating now with, with our assistance. It's... Um, it's, it's shameful. And in fact, let me just skip to um, uh, well, I'll get to it. Oh, the majority of the commissions are not functioning and not advising city council is to me a violation of our own ordinances. I just said that. And we must, we must uh, care and put effort and organize to have our commissions meeting and functioning. This is ridiculous. Uh, Council Member Escobar and I have been on uh, six months and, and there are very few commissions that are operating. The commissions are extremely important. They're an advisory uh, organization that functions to give us solid advice to the city council. And uh, if we truly do our job and respect them, it, it's a collaboration that can improve the city a lot better. Uh, I recommend, because, you know, I just heard uh, uh, former Mayor uh, Real say that there's no staffing. Okay, we have to think out of the box. We have to maybe change the rules. But the point is, the commissions must be functioning. We can't sit here complacently and just act like, mm -hmm. you know, it's okay. No, it's not okay. So I, uh, I know we're tired to death of committees, but I'd like to make an ad hoc committee with four members, two councilmen, and two other people, uh, I don't know, come up with the designations, and we can uh, research, dive into the problem, and maybe organize and get these, call the people and, and get these commissions going. Okay. Um, Three minutes. For no. What... Uh, The city, the city still hasn't taken care of, there, there was a, a couple uh, that I met, and two months ago I, I brought this up, uh, that there's an abandoned house, and please forgive me, uh, I didn't write it down, but I believe it's 629 Canal Street, and it's being used for drug consumption. Therefore, it's dangerous to the neighbors, especially the children. They indicate that there's loose uh, dirty syringes, needles, as you say, on the outside of the house. So could we still, <coughs> excuse me, uh, address that? Because that, that's really a safety problem. Uh, another, another problem that might be waiting for disaster is the huge trucks. I've had recently people come up to me and complain about the huge trucks that are speeding on... Uh, on the Highway 98. Now, I would say, in all fairness, it's not the majority of them, but it's enough to be concerned. Um, I did a little investigating. There's not much we can do. Uh, we could do an ordinance to slow down the speed rate, but again, I don't think all of them are, I, I think most of them are in compliance. If this is possible, may I recommend that we uh, contact the Sheriff's Department, the Highway Patrol, and our own officers coordinate uh, some type of effective law enforcement at specific areas where we, we know they're speeding. Uh, by the way, there are about four to five different schools along Highway 98. 
So we don't want to wait for a disaster to happen and then we react and do something about it. Um, the homeless. We had a tragedy a couple of weeks ago and uh, along with the news that two other homeless men had died within the last two years or so. It's very hot here. Uh, I regret that I had not acted on my own, uh, my own plans that I had been wanting to do and, and take it to the council, but now it's time. I have been collaborating with a, uh, a woman named Kay Puscola, and she's part of an organization called Code Lab and, uh, and other organizations uh, on the issue of establishing a permanent cooling shelter permanent. Now, we need to have one. Uh, of all places, Calexico needs to have one downtown. And it will be, a, it will be so I will be setting it up along with city manager uh, Armando Villa, a major meeting with all the important levels of government, state, county, school district, and city. And I believe we can make this happen on, on, uh, for huma on the humanitarian basis. We owe it to our citizens that are the most vulnerable, children, senior citizens, homeless, and our revered veterans. The good news is, according to her, from what I understand, is that the city will not be obligated to pay any funds. She seems to be, to be the Wonder Woman. She's got all kinds of connections and funding and grants. It might be t too good to be true, well, what the hell? Why not sit down and work something out? The other issue that I care about and I think we all should be ashamed about is the pool. When I was on the committee, uh, I remember we all worked hard and we all agreed that we were going to make this a community pool. Uh, open almost every day. Uh, coordinate with the school district, and then have seniors and children be able to go, because it's still gonna be hot all the way up to October. There are many, many months that it's hot. And uh, so that we could have a, a pool that is truly community, open for services on almost a daily basis. This is not the case, ladies and gentlemen. This is my last one. And it is shameful and disrespectful to our community that this summer will only be open for one little more than a lousy month. A pool that most of us may cost too much. Open for one month. And we have temperatures of 115 or so on a daily basis. I want, with the city council, to change this. Therefore, once again, I am calling for a major meeting. Now, it was my understanding, my understanding when we had a meeting at Yum Yum that both Senator Wessel and Assemblyman Garcia would try to help with the funding on a short-term basis, if at all. Could we have it open at least until August? And, and I don't want to hear that most people are gone. If there's 10 children that go there or whatever it's worth it, we owe it. Uh, and then on a long-term basis, we can have means to keep it open permanently. Brawley does it. El Central does it. Lexico has to do it. We have to stop being insecure, not having the confidence. We're a great city. Uh, we need to do these things for our people. So uh, that's it. And uh, maybe next time there'll be more. Thank you. Yeah, uh, Mr. Hodge, on that last note on the pool, I think we have uh, Mr. Villa working on with... On an emergency. Exactly. He's working with could, uh, could, staff to... Could you to, elaborate, to, sir, on that? Well, it, he hasn't really come up with a plan, but he's working on Okay. The, Thank okay? you very much. On, on, on that that's, issue. That's an emergency basis. Exactly. Exactly. We're planning to plan. There you go. We're planning to plan. Mr. Mr. Riyad, any comments? We're getting there. Um, I, I really didn't have any comments, but now that um, Mr. <clears throat> my colleague here, um, Mr. Hodge, has, has I, I, I completely agree with pretty much everything you said. 
um, there's definitely a lot of things that the city that we need to do, um, and and um, you touched on on a few, but there's there's many. I there mean, I I get calls from why isn't the um, street sweeper you know working anymore? Right. Why is downtown so dirty? Yes. You know, and and a lot of the issues that you stated come comes down to policing. Comes down to um, the big issue, which is our, our police department and and our staffing level at City Hall in general. Um, and again, how is why is that issue? It's because of funding. Everything comes down to money. If you have no money, you have no police. If you have no police, you have these issues. Um, with regards to our commissions, same thing. We, we already uh, did this once from going from, I think, 15 commissions down to, I guess we have maybe half now. Uh, we consolidated them because we didn't have the staff, and even now we don't have the staff. Um, and so, uh, again, it's it's not it's not a ma it's not a matter of the city not wanting to give people the best services that we can. Of course, we do. Who wouldn't? I'm sure the city manager, along with the the whole council, would love to give the city uh, 80 police officers. Uh, we'd love to give uh, you know these commissions one person dedicated to each commission and, and so forth. It's not a matter of what we want to do. It's a matter of what we can do. And I believe that our priorities have to be in place. It's true. You can't have commissions. You can't have police. You can't have anything if this city would have gone bankrupt and it nearly did. And I think that's important for us to understand. Are we getting better? Yes. But this city was literally taken back from the brink of a bankruptcy. And so, um, again, we're, I would love to strive along with Mr. Hodge and my fellow council members to, to get to a point where we, have no, we no longer have problems. I think that we're doing really great with what we have. We're, we're, you know, we're making, we have lemons and we're making lemonade. Uh, we're cleaning up the entrance of Calexico that looks really good, it by does. the way. Thank Kudos you. Kudos to our staff and our city manager for that. Um, we're spending millions of dollars on infrastructure that has been money just sitting there for the last, I don't know how long, and that's being spent. Um, you know, we're, with regards to Hearthstone, I know that there are unfortunate circumstances that have happened that was, I think, out of the control of everybody. I think, was there some possible, um, uh, did the city drop the ball? Possibly, yes, uh, but I think there's also some truth to uh, Mayor Pro Tem Pacheco's comments that, you know, uh, when the economy crashed, you know, uh, these companies that were supposed to finish these jobs, they just went bankrupt. They just said, you know what, we're out of here and we're going to go bankrupt and it is what it is. And they left uh, the city and the people in this situation and, and it is unfortunate. Um, but I know the city, along with um, the the two council members that were on, I, I don't know who's on it now, is it you? And we, we, I, it's the, Escobar. You and Escobar. I know that we, haven't had a meeting. we have actually done some progress. There's a street yes. being done. It's not like we're sitting down with our hands crossed and not doing anything. We're, we're trying. Uh, but again, everything comes down to monies. Uh, if you, I, I invite anybody that, um, that doesn't know this, please go to uh, the last budget um, when Mrs. Uh, Mayor was here and, and just look at our situation. Look at the overspending that we had of $9 million. Look at Last year, we, were, we had to put a placeholder. We had to get loans from our water enterprise. We've had to lower staff salaries, benefits. You name it, that, that we've done it. And, and why? Not because it's easy, because it's hard. And this, luckily, luckily, because I can tell you, I was here with a different council that really didn't want to make those tough decisions because they were scared. They were scared of the unions. They were scared of making these tough decisions that really should be done for the best of the community. Luckily, this council... Isn't, isn't taking the easy road. They're doing the tough things to make sure that this city continues for the next 110 years again, or, or 115 years. Um, so with that said, again, everything Mr. Hodge says I think is great. We need to, we need to do the best that we can, but we need to, our finances need to be in order. Last but not least, um, the homeless issue. Um, this is something that is, is, is an probably one of the hardest issues to work with because um, 
you know, it's almost on a case-to-case -case basis with, with the homeless population in Calexico. You have some people that are homeless. You have some people that um, are field workers that don't want to return to Mexicali and so steep in our parks just because it's convenient. You have, um, you have some people with mental problems, which is a, a, a whole other story. You have veterans. A lot of them are veterans. It's, it's almost on a case-to-case -case basis, and as much as... Uh, you know, I would love to help as much as I could. Um, it's it's a situation that is extremely difficult, um, and uh, I think we need uh, we need to help. But again, it all comes down to money, and so our priorities. I think I think personally, my number one priority is the people of the city of Calexico. They need to be taken care of first, and then and then we can actually help the other people that need help. But um, you know, the taxpayer, the people that live in the city of Calexico, we need to help them first. So um, let's, let's move on. Uh, I totally agree what uh, our former Mayor Mandy is, is saying, but um, may, maybe I'm wrong, and I'm, I, I ha do have an artist background. W what's happened to creativity? What's happened to thinking out of the box? What's happened to having a vision? Um, things are difficult, but let's see them as a challenge that can be solved. Uh, I bet if we get our minds together, even with very little money, there are some solutions that can be done. So uh, I still am always helpful uh, or hopeful on, on that. And along with uh, uh, Carmen Durazo, arts are extremely important. Any comments? Two quick comments. Uh, Mr. Villa, uh, I realize we are in a financial crisis, but could we look into fixing our sound system? Maybe servicing our sound system? I'm not talking about replacing it, but it's pretty embarrassing. So we could look into maybe servicing our sound system. The other comment is uh, I've been on council for six months now, and Hearthstone, I, I initially knew it as Pacific Century, has been an issue from day one. Uh, it'd probably behoove us to uh, discuss with our community members, especially the people that live in Hearthstone and the community as a whole, to, for them to all understand. I've been privy to being at ad hoc committees along with Mr. Hodge, and I think it's important that everybody knows uh, where we stand as far as the financing and that CFD is uh, in place. Why is it there? What it funded, et cetera. And again, I'm, I'm praying some information that maybe some people are not. So I think it's important that we openly discuss and have maybe a presentation uh, Eduardo, tú tienes toda esa información. No sé si fuera buena idea presentarlo en una junta el siguiente mes, en la siguiente junta. Thank you. Uh, mine very brief. We had a great grand opening with uh, Cardenas. A lot of people were there. It was a beautiful, beautiful uh, market. It was just a, a, a great place to be. Hay tortillas, queso, carne, restaurant, hay todo. It's a great place to be and we can shop in Cardenas. We also had a equipment at the Kennedy Gardens. We had the Calexico Hospital Board uh, donate uh, some equipment for the residents of that area. So little by little, uh, these parks are getting filled with good uh, equipment so people can have a chance to work out and not pay money to go to a gym. Other than that, those are my comments. Um, we're going to go down to city manager's report. Yes. Just a couple of things. Um, I thought we fixed the, the mics, but I, I see that they're still, they're still way off. They were cali calibrated, but uh, trust me, it was worse last time with the, <laughs> but we'll, we'll, we'll fix them. Uh, one, one thing is I know that we had uh, the Brown, Brown Bag Coalition representatives uh, come up to us at the last meeting and uh, they stated that uh, you know, this, they, they were misinformed about uh, you know some of the shelters that we have for some of the homeless, 
we did meet with them, the mayor, uh, Maris Hortado, myself, Chief Gomez, uh, Chief Avila, and, and, and uh, Director Toller. We, we met and we provided some information about the cooling centers that we have in the city. We have the, the Camarena Library, we have um, the, the uh, Clinica de Salud, and then we also presented them other options. You know, there are uh, other nonprofits that provide shelter to these individuals, uh, the Catholic Charities and the Men's Shelter and the Calexico um, neighborhood, neighborhood House. And, and I think at the conclusion of our meeting, they were, they were, they were pretty pleased to learn that we, we really weren't turning away homeless people from these cooling centers. We did say that we, we did experience some, some of them that misbehave or some of, them, some of them that come in with mental problems and they, they're, they're disruptive, they do at, are asked to leave. But for the most part, we welcome everybody that needs cooling centers. Uh, we did uh, reference that the, the fact that there is a countywide coalition, homeless coalition that is working towards finding regional solutions to the homeless problem. And obviously, um, it, is, it is very difficult to establish a homeless facility here in town because we, you know, the, 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 we, we wouldn't want everybody to come here to think that this, the, the, there's no other shelters in the valley. So this, this has to be dealt with, I think, on a more comprehensive regional, re regional basis. And we are participating in meetings. I think we did send a representative to, to that meeting. So we are at the table. Uh, collaborating to deal with the homeless uh, population and issues. So we're, we're going to continue to work with them and provide information to, um, to the Brown Bag Coalition uh, members. Mr. Mayor, pro tem, may I uh, remark? Go ahead. Uh, Mr. Mayor, yeah. I respect what you say, and that's very good. Appreciate that, but uh, I don't see why we couldn't. Uh, 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 discrimination itself is, is, is not a negative value. There are lots of discriminations that are positive, and uh, we could discriminate. I mean, by only flexing uh, in our city pooling system and so forth. So I think those problems can be worked out. And then just one, one more thing. Traditionally, August is it's a really slow, a slow month for business, and I think uh, people take advantage of the month of August to go on vacation yeah. right before I, uh, school starts. And I I'm, I'm just want to let you know that we right now we don't have a great deal of business uh, to, to deal with in terms of city council, so we may uh, go dark uh, one meeting, possibly the, the two meetings. So just want to let you know if there's anything that, that, is, that must be considered by the council, we will call, either utilize one of the council meetings uh, that are already scheduled or schedule a, pub, a special meeting. I will motion that. Third, fourth. Thank you. Food for thought. Yeah, that's Food it. Food for thought. Thank you. Food um, for thought. If I'm not mistaken, um, we have to vote on that, correct? To be able to go dark? Um, yeah, it's not on the agenda. I mean, we're, right now we're, we're going to evaluate now. whether or not we need, obviously there's no items and we wouldn't have a meeting. But yeah, um, yeah it's, it's not on the agenda specifically tonight, though. But Thank you. No, it's not. Uh, not. Thank you, Mr. Yeah. yeah. Moving to the consent agenda. All matters listed under consent agenda to be considered routine by the city council, redevelopment agency, successor agency, for the Flexco Finance Authority. We will 
be enacted by one motion in the form listed. Any item may be removed from the consent calendar and to be considered separately by the council. Motion to approve. Mayor Patel. I would like to We have some speakers, public comments. Uh, Mr. Christian Martinez on item number two. Good evening, you guys, and good evening to uh, the City Council. I'm fairly new here to Calexico. Welcome. I'm uh, the grandson of the Estradas here at uh, Las Palmas, so I'm actually here with their business development department that I've been studying uh, in college, and also the wastewater division in Sacramento State. Um, a couple things about the economic development. Um, I know we talk about business is slow in August. Um, the swap meet does attract a lot of people over the years, a lot, a lot of people. So to work with the city on that, uh, Every month currently, we've been hosting events. Uh, August 2nd, we're, holding, we're hosting a back to school event. For all the kids in the community that are you know, low income or whatnot, uh, we're giving away a thousand backpacks. Um, so you guys are all more than welcome to join the festivities on a Wednesday. We're working with Tony Dominguez for our marketing and promoting. Uh, we're promoting Mexicali in the Imperial Valley and within the city of Calexico. Um, second, for the economic development, I know Highway 98 is getting under construction. Um, we do have high traffic flow coming in November, December, and uh, we've been in talks with Hazard and Granite Construction, Caltrans. That's when they'll be closing Ali, Estrada Boulevard. So my question to the city is where is all that traffic going to go through if those roads are close to the swamp meet? I know it's a pain in the butt for the city to deal with that traffic sometimes, but closing off that road will create a mess in the traffic, just giving you guys a heads up on that. Um, second, youth programs, uh, economic development, I think we do need youth programs. You guys touched on it. I know the city's hurting on that. We are working and trying to get a meeting with Edward Garcia, uh, 56th Division. Estradas do have a lot of property. They're willing to work with the city, the county, and the Southern District to put soccer fields, to put baseball fields. That's community support. That's fundraising. That's getting other business people involved. Um, a lot of things are coming to Calexico. In San Diego, in LA, there's great farmer's markets. Huge swap meets, beautiful. Um, the swap, the swap meet this year will reach its 49th uh, anniversary. So next year we're going to 50 years. You know that's a, that's a great it's a great accomplishment. That's half that's half of that right there. Um, to, to show that local community support, um, Grand Plaza is open, but a lot of people in this camp, this community in Mexicali can't afford that nice clothes. The reason why we get four to six thousand people every Wednesday because they can afford that cheap clothes that they need to put on their backs. So you guys all been to the swap meet. Um, it could use you guys a little bit more support. Street sweeping, Ollie Avenue has a quarter inch of dirt right now. That hasn't been street sweeped for over a, a year. Um, I'm paying a crew right now to clean it up with shovels and rakes. Um, that's kind of a disappointment. Um, just letting you guys know on that. And then again, that back to school. We are hosting uh, events um, once a month to get those youth back involved. Um, I think it's most important for the kids. I worked as a head coach for a, a lifeguard in uh, Mission Valley, San Diego. I was also the director of aquatics in Chula Vista. So opening that pool, especially in the desert, especially here in Calexico, would help. I also swam for a couple colleges, so I could understand how those youth programs really impact the community. And last of all, for economic development, if you guys want to open up West, open a stand, make some extra money. You guys are more than welcome to come down, even for the youth. Um, there's no stopping kids from selling. I have kids right now making at least six grand a month selling used items, so if you guys want to head out there, we're open Tuesday through Sunday. I know the city needs the economic you know, help and all that, and we're willing to work with the city with some proper we have available for you guys. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Christian. Mr. Jose Vargas on item number four. And once again, I pulled that item, uh, Mayor Pro Tem. Hmm? Get there. I, I pulled number four. Mr. Vargas. Uh, 
misappropriations of that money when not burning people of God. Could could I um could I miss um Mr. Vargas, um, would you mind having a, a meeting with the city manager um, and maybe one or two council members on this issue? I think you're very misinformed on a lot of things that you're saying, and I, I, I think I know where it comes from. I know you, your advice from an ex-council member and that doesn't like Grand Plaza for obviously uh, uh, personal reasons because they own businesses and stuff like that. But um, I, I think you need to. I think you need to hear it from from the city manager and with real paperwork and everything to, so you can understand exactly what happened with Grand Plaza, exactly what monies were, uh, were used for Grand Plaza. The continue to say, just like another council member, ex-council member that Grand Plaza owes six million dollars. We have already looked into that. There is, there is no money owed from Grand Plaza, six million, let alone six million dollars. Um, again, it's, it's lies that you're being told. I'm sorry that you're being told those lies by, by somebody, um, but um, I would I would really like you to sit down with the city manager and 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 uh, maybe two council members so you could actually I, I know that I've gone through all this and maybe other council members as well, but we would be willing to give the time to yourself so that you understand exactly what happened and how it's gone wrong and and what Grand Plaza actually uh, what the city helped Grand Plaza with, which is infrastructure, which is not any monies for the actual Grand Plaza, it's for the streets and everything that the day Grand Plaza leaves, we're still gonna have anyways, which helps our, uh, uh, our airport and all the development that's gonna happen in that area that is city owned property. Um, so again, you know, when people say we give money to Grand Plaza, it's, it's for the road which belongs to the city for the next 100 years and it helps our land value at the airport. So anyways, long story short, would you be willing to sit down and listen to the other side of the coin versus what you're being told now? Okay, well that's I would really appreciate it. I think it would give you, it would open your eyes. You're hearing, you, and I know who you're hearing it from, and again, you know, yeah. it's, <laughs> it's unfortunate. Let's go back. You're not sure. I don't. I, what's what service fee? Number five for the grump. But Mr. Vargas, it wasn't the city that did that to you. It was the developer, not the city. All, we ha all, all we're entitled to is to ask for the taxes so we can levy and get money to pay. But the city, the city was not. I still, I believe, if you embark on an endeavor of a project for the community, you're supposed to get the the proper surety bonds to complete that project. If you don't, then it's gonna it's coming out of your own pocket. That's the the risk you're taking for not getting the the, the proper surety I don't, I, that, bonds. No, that's no, not correct. Guys, no. we need to be. Oh. Uh, that is. I just want to thank. Mr. Vargas, you got 30 seconds. We yeah, wait. I just want to ask you, you know, in a nice manner to waive us the, uh, the levying of the uh, CFD tax, 2000, the CFD tax 2005-1 for this year. 
help us. Let's start fixing the problem. I believe we have started fixing the problem. Well, public works it doesn't fix the yeah. problem because the, the, okay. there was a shouted down. Thank, thank you, Mr. Vargas. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank but you. please take your time to to sit down with our city manager and go through this. I'm, again, you're being misinformed by somebody that's using this as a political tool. Please, please make the time to sit down with him and, and speak about this. Thank you. Mr. Jung Kim on item number four. I don't, I never said yes, your Yes, you said the lie, lie. I never said your name. I, I, okay, same thing, ex, ex council member, I'm here. Three minutes, Mr. Kim. Okay, and uh, I believe the, you guys have to be very careful to talk with the communities. And you guys talking at the Facebook, that, uh, uh, criticizing your own employees, and those things already been entitled to be through the city. You guys have to, have to know that. Okay. CFT bond is based on property tax, special tax. I'm not going to go to number five yet. And you guys do diligent to collect the service fee from the community, and you guys not doing the job. A city of Calexico, of course, you're not, you not uh, none of the council member was there except Mr. Pacheco when they approved the CFT. At that time, the city of Calexico allowed you bypass the law. That's why infrastructure, that's why infrastructure is not done yet. <clears throat> and you guys, if you, you mentioning about that, the city of Calexico didn't collect that $5.9 million infrastructure fee is what's called either deferred and never collected. And I've been asking, keep asking the budget. If the budget doesn't show up to collect this $6 million, good money. And besides that, half a million dollars you guys deferred last year to December 28th. And that is not collected yet. That didn't even happen. Okay. Then supposed to be collecting money then. Misinformed. Oh, it's a council approved it. Like always. For the pudding. And you guys, is supposedly the citizens, the pay the taxes, property taxes should be enough to do service for the community. And you guys are creating the special taxes for the service. And the city of Calexico has been kept sending their money to the payments, not for the service of the community. They sh it shouldn't do that. The city of Calexico should stop the collecting service fee from the community. They are not just a part of the community member. They're not wealthy, or they, they have money to throw away to the, some other citizens not doing it. The city of Calexico, council member, they are for the community and for the, for the, or for the for some of the group. You got to have to show your true colors. 30 seconds. <clears throat> and again, the council member, the due diligence for the community, protect them, not for the protect the big business. The city of Calexico's problem is the people, decent people, they're not arguing, they're not fighting, nothing up here. The only interest group are here to convince the council member, convince the city staff to get the benefit out of it. And when they, get, when they got all the benefit, they just wash away. Thank you, Mr. Kim. Thank you.
Gracias, señor Licón. You can, can you step up to the podium, please? Yeah, and then if he can fill, if he can fill a spear card afterwards for the record. Thank you. My name is Javier Jimenez. Also, a, uh, uh, I live at the Hearthstone community, 1065 F. Herrera Street. I also noticed that the... Uh, drainage and some other uh, services have been plugged up by the asphalt. They were never uh, um, unplugged again. They're totally covered. That's one of my concerns. Going back to the uh, money that we paid the uh, school from our uh, uh, CFDs, those six million dollars, or close to six million dollars, was because of the impact we were going to create on the uh, schools, but the impact was based on 500 houses. There were only, uh, our community only has 250 houses. So we request from you, uh, city council, to get $3 million back because we are only a community of 250 homes. So you owe us money. Thank you. Thank you. The issue of the schools, we, we have no control of where you need to go or what you were promised. The school district works independent of the city council. They select where one is going to attend its school of attendance. Whether or not a school is overpopulated in one area, they need to farm out and make sure that the schools are balanced. We have no control of the schools, and I'm sorry for that issue. I know it's a concern that we didn't get to go to the new schools, the, the Cesar Chavez, the, the, um, 
Kiki Camaren or Willie Moreno. It's, it's a school issue. Yes? <clears throat> And if I, uh, if, see, uh, if I might, if I might add, you know the the monies, the monies that are, are that go to school districts for 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 things like this, the six million dollars, they're there, the the they're there because of their impact. They're an impact that in the future they will use those monies to make a school when they need it. I don't know if I don't know how that works. I don't know how the school district knows when they need a school in that area, but. Um, Again, that's something for the school district. I know, I'm, I know on our end that we are, I am sure that we will be willing to um, help um, Hearthstone with, with whatever we can, and we have. We voted on spending a million dollars on, on, on finishing the roads and a lot of things that, that haven't been done in the past. And, but it's really frustrating. It's really frustrating because you have people, um, uh, even even ex council members that were here for four years and didn't do anything about it, now all of a sudden they want to save the day. Wow! Um, but uh, that's that that's very amusing. But again, um, it's not that we're not we don't want to help. It's it's that it, this is a big problem. It, I think everybody needs to sit on the table and figure out mm -hmm. what we're gonna do. But we have we have done something. That's what I'm trying to say. Did we fix all your problems? No. But we're 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 helping. Streets getting done. Uh, the over, you guys Lighting. had holes. I remember ha seeing the Streets. holes. They're being fixed. I mean, things are being done. But obviously, we can't um, we can't do everything. Do everything. But Ms. Garcia, again. anybody else? Uh, Lorena Minora, item number four. Good council. evening, Council Lorena Minor, uh, Hearthstone Community. That's I appreciate ridiculous. Mr. Hodge you saying not going into discussion because some of the council members obviously don't know what's going on. Mr. Real is saying what he's asking Mr. Uh, Jose, what is he talking about? He's talking about item four. That's what he's talking about. Did you read the agenda? Yes. Don't answer me. But... I'm just saying, think, think about it. That's what he's asking you. That's what he started to talk about. Maybe he's not expressing himself correctly, but to go back to Mr. Licon, he's bringing out perfect uh, circumstances. We have gone to the school district multiple times. The school district refuses to help us. You know, I recently uh, looked at the map. We're not part of the district for Calexico, we're considered with Holtville when it comes to elections for both Imperial County Office of Education and for the County Board of Supervisors. Just our area, why? You know, why does the city refuse to help us with these certain issues? You know, when it came time to asking the school to remap our homes, they refused to. Now the city should be able to help us because this was part of the original deal. You know, without disrespecting some of the council members, it seems like, yes, you are helping us, but it's like, Mr. you know, we're here, we were here a year ago, and that's why you started helping us. It was Mr. Villa who took the initiative to help us. But the money that's being used is the bond money. It's not the CFD money. You know, wherever you live, you're not paying twice as much as we are. I have a salary cut that continues to go because the city cut my salary. How? How am I supposed to pay back the CFDs? Look at what they're saying without discussion here. We've had ad hoc committees, continue to have the ad hoc committees because we can go on here like we have in the past and that's not what we're asking. We're asking the city to intervene, the council members to ask the school board to help us out, to look at everything because that's part of the 280 something page that you signed, Mr. Pacheco, 10, 12 years ago. Commit to what you signed 12 years ago. You know, that's what we're asking for. You, you know, the, the levies are gonna be raised every year, every year, just like Mr. Kapanikas did for years. I've paid over $35,000 in CFDs by myself. And mine is one of the smaller homes. And I think that's what they're trying to ask tonight. Thank you. Anybody else, Ms. Garcia? Yes, Mr. John Kim on item number five. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank 
you. You're welcome. We haven't approved item four. So how are we moving to item five? Per item. We're doing on the, con the, on the consent calendar items, we're taking comments right now. Oh, Correct. okay. All right. Okay. And this proof, big proof here, thank you for the backup documents. And the uh, Grand Plaza, they have a, a special tax for the uh, area one, area two, but there is no service, service portions. Hallstone, physical year 2017, 2018, special tax rate for services, but not in Grand Plaza. This is for, the, for their own compass. I don't know whose compass is there. It's, it's a big, here's a big proof. The city of Calexico, not for the community. City of Calexico for the merchants, the big merchants, big developers. As clearly it's showing here. And they are due the diligence, everybody going to vacation, they do diligence to have here put in the agenda, try to make it prove today. I'm not, I'm, I'm not against the Grand Plaza project, but I'm against it, our tax money goes to the Grand Plaza. Every merchants, everybody, they have a right to come here to collect you to make their own business. But they don't have a right to take our tax dollar money. But our council is a year has been doing it. I've been fighting for four years. And a lot of these kind of things, it, when I was council, they never informed us until I found the last, last years. So how they doing it, the staff, they're hiding from the council. They're hiding information as much as they can. And our council member, if they want to be a good council member, they have to do the diligence. Even they're showing the front of them, they were saying that some council member, the political venue for this one. Unfortunately, I don't get much benefit from that. The people, was saying, last year when I tried to help the Hudson community, some politicians told me, oh, they don't vote, so they don't have much vote, so why are you helping them? And for me, it's not really matter vote or not, as our community needs to get the fair support, fair support from the, our cities, not like to, to, to favor to, not to charging any service fee for the debt. And also, this the safety bond is not based on the tax, uh, perpetrator tax. So the city is supposed to collect the city uh, sales tax. We, city, are allowed to pay the sales tax to pay the, the bond, which is, that's why city of Kalisco no money. And city of Kalisco, they throwing the money away to the big developers, and they try to squeeze the community to get the collect as much as they can. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Kim. Thank you. We, we have our, our, our tax consultant. If you want to have him do a presentation, would you like to come up and is say? Is there anybody else? Uh, well, yeah. well, no, we're Thank still, you. we're still, we're still. Hi, good evening, council members. Thank you members. for coming. You're very welcome. Uh, my name is Doug Floyd. I'm with the firm Koppel and Gruber Public Finance. Um, we were hired last year to be the uh, CFD administrator for both the Hearthstone CFD as well as the Grand Plaza CFD. I'm not sure if there's any specific questions you'd like me to the go Hearthstone over. The Hearthstone issues. The Hearthstone issues, okay. So just briefly, because I, I, I do think there's some misinformation um, out there. The Hearthstone CFD is, was authorized to pay for um, both public infrastructure. Uh, the infrastructure that was authorized was for sewer improvements, uh, improvements for retention basin, roads, um, as well as the school fees, as has been mentioned. Um, any cost that could not be financed from those bonds were an obligation to the developer, meaning if there wasn't sufficient funds from the bond issue, they would have to be covered by the developer, as we know, um, went bankrupt um, several years earlier, or later. Um, 
for the can Hearthstone I, CFD. Can I, oh, can I ask you a question? Sure. Um, so <clears throat> when a developer goes bankrupt, there, there should be some type of bond that they have that someone could go after for a complete completion bond or a surety bond? Is that correct? I'm not sure. Like usually a surety bond is like a, a reserve bond. Um, however, when this CFD was established and the bonds were issued, um, there wasn't a surety bond, but there was a cash reserve that was put in place. And that is mandatory through SEC rules, mm -hmm. Securities Exchange Commission rules, and the IRS to have that reserve in case there is a, a delinquent amount in the taxes. It can be covered through those reserve funds. But those reserve funds aren't uh, specific for projects Completion. or facilities. Correct. Okay. Any, uh, go ahead. Go ahead. any other specific No, go ahead. Go, continue. I just wanted to make, stop you there real quick to ask that question. Okay. And, and I just want to point out, because there is also discussion on um, asking council to waive the taxes for this year. Um, I will say that when bonds are issued through the CFD, as in this case, um, when those bonds are issued, the legislative body, the council, uh, acting on behalf of the CFD is obligated to levy the taxes in order to pay the debt service on the bonds. There's a, a covenant that's agreed upon between the bondholders and council. And so it's their really their fiduciary duty to levy that in order to pay the debt service each year. Um, if an act of not levying the taxes could have very serious uh, implications, um, uh, you know, just throwing off possibilities, but the bondholders uh, could construe that as a violation of those bond covenants and, and basically uh, come back and, and file litigation against the city. The other repercussion is just as if I was paying my mortgage and stopped paying my mortgage, I have a credit rating. It would, so just, just, so we're, really, oh, go ahead. just so we're clear, yep. if the city was to vote to um, uh, uh, cancel to cancel or to defer or whatever, um, obviously the city is responsible for these for this bond, and if they were not paid, the bondholders would obviously sue the city to pay them anyways. I, I'm just saying that's a possibility. And uh, would... this, and the most importantly, and then more most importantly, I believe um, the city credit rating to bond in the future would be completely, I mean, it, it, exactly. Could nobody would severe implications correct. to credit would be hurt. Correct. The, the, the city to issue uh, debt for capital projects. Correct. And that's citywide. Yeah. We would lose, we would lose uh, the city's credit. And pretty city's much. Credit. Exactly. So, I mean, those are those two, two implications to consider. I just thought I'd, I'd go for that. Now, um, when we first went out with this 14 million up front, that money was spent for school fees, yes. impact fees, drainage. Th that's uh, exactly right. So and that was spent in, in that fashion. There's no Nothing money left. Owed there, to there's, as far as I'm aware, there's no money owed that, to that's it. sitting. Okay. And all that money gets held by a fiscal agent bank when those bond proceeds um, are deposited. They don't go directly to the city. They actually go with a, a, a bank. And the bank holds those in trust and, and disperses those as authorized. So, so when people believe that the city is getting that money, that's not the case. That's not the case. Okay. The, the, there's a project fund that gets funded, held at the some bank. People, some people are telling people that the city gets the money and then, yeah. you know, keeps it or somehow that, that – now, one other question I have sure. um, as far as – somebody did raise a point as far as, you know, it, those $14 million were for the whole, um, the whole development and – what they're saying is that not all of the development got done uh, so that there should be an amount left because the, we didn't use all 14 million. Is that correct? Or is that? No, the, the, the project funds have, uh, again, have been they were completely used. dispersed. Okay. Um, the, the plan was to continue to build homes, uh, you know, nearly. The second five, phase. With the possibly phase another CFD. Homes. We're actually levying on the property that's currently undeveloped. There's, undeveloped. That's, that's part of the annual levy of taxes. So people are paying their taxes for that portion that isn't, doesn't yeah, have any residential. Yeah, we're levying those properties levying that are owned property. by the developer, yes. Thank you, thank you, yeah. thank you. Um, a concern is um, when these people came in and purchased these homes at a lower rate, 
they weren't taxed at the lower rate, they're being taxed at the original price that was given to the, the development. Is, the, is, 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 am I making sense? The, the, the original price, do you mean the tax or the, the actual price the actual, of the home? The actual tax for yeah. the CFD. Okay, so the, the, the tax itself is non-escalating, so, and, and it varies depending on the size of the home, as, as I think a property owner mentioned. But the facilities tax does not escalate each year. It's, it, it, stays, it stays firm Correct. what the original right. price was in the beginning. Yeah, and, and what happens is, I, I think there's confusion too, is you know you pay a certain amount each year. It's fixed throughout. Um, and I, I've heard the question, it might not have been in this forum, but in previous uh, discussions, that you know, why is the, the bonds that are outstanding, um, it, there's still about $12 million in bonds outstanding. It's just like a, a mortgage where you're paying a lot of the interest up front, and you, as you pay it through the term, you pay more and more principal. The amortization you. rate. Exactly. <clears throat> so, so um, I hope that answers your uh, do, do you want to continue? Or do you have more to say? I, I don't really have much more to say okay. unless there's specific questions. Well, I, I, wanted, I, wanted to, I want to thank you for clarifying this because, uh, again, as you can see, there's an informed, um, uh, uh, uninformed people and, and people speaking. Um, sometimes when you're, uh, when you're a council member or ex-council member, people listen to what you say thinking that you know what you're talking about. Um, unfortunately, I caution everybody and want everybody that's interested to actually come and talk to either the city manager or someone like yourself that actually knows, not even myself, because we're not professionals when it comes to this. None of us up here are professionals when it comes to bonds, and, and that's why the city manager and someone like yourself um, uh, does this work. But just also for clarification on Grand Plaza, um, would you mind clarifying the bond for Grand Plaza, was it used for Grand Plaza or was it used for just off-site improvements, which are roads and all that stuff? Because people, some people are telling people that, um, that we gave Grand Plaza money for Grand Plaza. Yeah, and so, so around $7 million, $7 million in bonds were issued and that was specifically for city infrastructure. City infrastructure. So mm -hmm. to, to put in place infrastructure for that so, development or, or surrounding that development. So, for example, in a city that, that has money, because obviously Calexico um, doesn't have that money, most cities, when somebody like Grand Plaza comes to them and says, I want to build this, when the city has, if, if we had the $7 million, the city would have done it anyways, because that is the city's property, correct? Well, typically what happens, and, and that's, see, the, the, the CFD is an alternative financing mechanism what happens is if, if I build a home or a commercial center and in this city or any city, you have to pay impact fees up front or you have to have ways of, of helping the city put in that infrastructure. Mm. So the CFD is really a financing mechanism that allows the, the developer to basically put in that infrastructure, get it paid through the bond issue, and then they have to pay, the, the landowner or the property owner has to pay the tax to pay off that debt Correct. That was issued to pay the infrastructure. Okay. So, so instead of paying the fees up front, they just use the bond. Again, for case. again for clarification, sure. real quick. And so the, the 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 bond for Grand Plaza was not to help Grand Plaza; was to build the street, the lights, and all the stuff right. that that belongs to the city. Right. And and yeah. the, okay. they're paying a tax each year to pay off that debt. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for coming. You're, you're very welcome. Okay. Thank you. And I'm glad you're here because. Well, I think some, a lot of people would have left. Uh, it cleared up a lot of, uh, a lot of people sleeping. Yeah, okay. and I, again, my, I, you know, we're open to. Last year, I don't know if you recall, we came to a, a meeting, a mm. workshop with the property owners, tried to, you know, give as much information as possible. Mm. We're happy to sit down with the city. Manager. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank you for showing up. Yeah. You're very welcome. Thank is, you. Is there any other item on, other than two, three, four, five, and six that we, we need to discuss anymore? I make a motion to approve. Oh my. You haven't had enough discussion on the Hartsville? Please take Yes, have your, have your say.
grave, grave injustice. I don't even think you have the empathy or the respect that we're giving you them. Because, uh, the, you know, they don't really care about all these explanations or defenses. They are warranted defenses, believe me. And we have to be careful. We are broke. But these people, what they care about and are upset about is that they're paying double tax. There's nothing to show for it. Their salaries are cut. Uh, I would be pissed off and upset the same as they are. Uh, on, number, on number four, the CFD, the, the, the money approved cost goes to, for, for their area, administrative cost, interest schedule for collection on outstanding bonds, principal schedule for collection on outstanding term bonds, and so forth. Then we go over to number six. It's a CFD. And the money is going for maintenance of parks and open space with boundaries of the district, operation and maintenance of storm protection, and storm drain system. I don't know all the details. I'm sure you have the reasons why there's not equity here, maybe a different time. I, I mean, we can't fix their parks because they have no parks. But uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to vote no and protest against this. So that's my position. The, the uh, Ms. Mr. Hodge, the, the other uh, parcel does have a park, does have areas to be cleaned up, and that would be the Rodiles Bravo. And these folks don't have that, but the other, other parcel does have that. So there's, there's two different issues, and the money is really minuscule. It's $200. You can't compare that to for what they're going to pay in additional taxes only. And the other one is, no, 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 not Hearthstone. No, 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 Rodiles. Rodiles, that's a different, different well, setup. I'm concerned about Hearthstone. Because I think that they're a priority, and I think that's a great Yes, we, well, we don't want to get the city. So let's, 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 let's put vote, it, I don't want to argue, I just want to state my Okay. Position. Let's we put it vote. on the agenda to, to not pay the, the so let's completely vote. repeal the, the, let's the bond. Vote. Is there a motion to accept two, three, four, five, and six as as listed on the consent agenda? No, no. If you want to, if you want to add something, Mr. Hodge, go ahead. Do you want to pull number four? Okay, I thought you wanted to pull it for discussion. Now, what do you, what do you want to say? He wants to vote on number four only. I'm going to say no on four. I say yes on all the others. So figure it out. Okay, uh, is there a motion to accept two, five, and six? I'll second that. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Me. Motion was made sorry, by. Motion second. Mm -hmm. I'll say yes and second by Mr. Riad. Now, is there a motion to accept number four? All those in favor? Is there a motion? Is there a motion to accept item number four on the consent agenda? I move that we accept number four. Is there a second? I'll second that. Is there a vote? Aye. 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 No. <clears throat> Gabby, did, did we did number three? Was that included in the, the first motion? Number three. Yes, we accepted. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I want to clarify. <clears throat> No, I'm serious. If we're going to do it, let's do it then. Uh, uh, Port of order. The, the voting for number four was 3-1. Three 3-1. One. One. Three one. To accept Mr. Hodge is the sole Protest. protester. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hodge. Items pulled for discussion. Potential items, action items number seven. Considering authorization, authorizing city manager to sign and continue to negotiate MOU with the district for one SRO officer for a two-year period. Mr. Villa. Yes, Mr. Mayor Porton. We have actually a presentation by Lieutenant Gerardo. So as he makes his way up here. Good 
Good evening, uh, Honorable City Council, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my name is Lieutenant Gonzalo Gerardo, City Collection Police Department, and I'm here today to ask uh, the City Council to approve uh, that Mr. Villa continue to try to negotiate a, an MOU with the school district. We met with the school district uh, this past month, and we came, we had come to an agreement of having them fund uh, for a school resource officer uh, full time. Our hope the, that we could get three officers for three years. The school's trying to find funding for it. Um, so then we decided to go two for two years, uh, but the school district just replied to us and told us they could only fund one officer for two years for right now, but they will be looking uh, for future funding for school resource officers. I don't know if you guys know the, the or you men know the background of a school resource officer and how important it is to have one. Well, first of all, it provides better safety uh, for the students, the staff, because uh, you have a person on site. They serve as mentors, counselors, uh, and deter crime from happening. The position of school resource officers in the past where we've had an MOU has actually the call volume does not decrease, um, but one of the things that happens is that the school resource officers, since they're there um, at the schools, they develop a very good relationship with the students, thus creating a very a good bond between them where they report crimes before they happen. Uh, if something, if a crime does occur, they do tell the school resource officer uh, who did it and it helps us maintain uh, order and control of the school district. With all these school shootings and threats that happen in the future, I do, uh, and the chief and I are just in our department do recommend that the city allow Mr. Villa to continue negotiations, not only agree for, uh, for him to enter an agreement with the school district for this one officer for two years, but actually try to see if we can get what we want, it was three for three years in the future. I think the presence of an officer at the campus, especially the high school, would uh, really uh, diminish or, or his presence would make it a valuable thing to have an officer there to, to cut back on travesuras and whatever happens. But it, it, it's good that they're at least paying for one. Thank you. Okay. Um, I have a question. Uh, I don't know if uh, maybe you can answer it or... or but my understanding is the last time we had SROs at the school, the city was owed like two years of, of SROs that weren't paid to the city. So I would like to make sure that we look into that because that's, according to what I remember, um, there, there, was, there was some money owed from the school district to the city we'll regarding that. these school resource officers. Um, I, I also believe that for the safety of our children, um, it helps to have school resource officers there. I know that uh, when I was growing up, they always had, I don't know who paid for it, but I do recall there being a, 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 an officer that would come by, uh, if I'm not mistaken, it was Officer Sanchez when uh, he would come by. And, and, and you know, there was, there was definitely having a presence there helps. But again, um, I, I, think if, I think this needs to be a, a joint effort between um, the, the school district and the city. And, and one year doesn't seem to be, um, it, it doesn't seem to be that the, that, uh, the school district is, is helping the city out. And I'll, and I'll reiterate why, because if we hire an officer, um, that is an officer that, that um, is a union officer that, you know, next year when they say, you know what, guess what, we can't pay for it, then guess what, the city has to take that cost. You can't tell the officer, hey, you know what, buddy, the, the school doesn't want to uh, uh, give us the money anymore, so you know you got to go. You can't fire that officer like that. That's not that's not the way it works. So we take on a a bigger, um, uh, uh, I guess, uh, uh, yeah, than than they do. If they're really if they really want to do it, you know, you know what? Okay, well, set up, do a five year, you know, something long term that says, you know what? What is Calixto High School going to close next year? No, they're going to be there for hopefully the next 50 years. So why not 
a, a long-term lease with the city and say, a long, not a long, I mean a long-term uh, a contract with the city and say, you know, we want, right now we want one officer, but, you know, one year? I mean, what's that? It, no, no, it's, it, it's, it's one for two years, Mr. Mr. Real. One even, officer for even, two years. Even that is, even that, I, I think it needs to be at least five years. I think it shows that they're committed to the city uh, and their children. What are they trying to say, that in two years everything's going to be safe? Negative, I, I completely disagree. If anything, things are getting harder. Uh, you know, more kids are looking at, you know, doing these crazy things and terrorism and all stuff. And if anything, in two or three years, they should be looking at putting in an extra officer, not taking one out. What are they trying to tell us, that well, we're only going to need an officer for a little bit, then you, he can go back? Yeah. No, hey, no thanks. Mr. Allen, one of the things that this is doing is opening a door for communication for us because we did, I've been here for 26, a little bit over 26 years, and I remember the school resource officers that first started, and that was when Javier Moreno was here, and David Sanchez, Victor Legaspi, Fernie Lara, uh, Julio Diaz. I mean, I can name all the officers that have been there. And we did start with a three-year, uh, two, two, it was a probation officer and an officer for, for like three years contract. And then it kept on going until 2013. Uh, there was a, a miscommunication MOU, something happened between the city and the school district, so our, our partnership was broken. So now that Chief Gomez is here, and then we decided we we're going to go back, and we established a dialogue with him again, Mr. Via met us. So this is just opening the door for us to actually go in, get this one, one officer for two years for right now, while Mr. Via works with the school uh, district and myself, Ms. Sambris did say that she's looking for, to fund another one, for, so it can be two for two. And I, and I, I, I agree with you, but at the same time, this, I'll give you an example. How many calls have you guys responded to at the school district now that they're not paying us anything? Well, that's what I'm saying. Exactly. So, 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 so we're we doing, should, as we a should... city, we're doing our part. As no. a city, we're already putting our part in saying, look, we're servicing your, your school. Um, you know, they need to do their part and, and, and obviously tell the city, hey, we, and, and again, the reason I'm, I'm doing this is we're short on, on monies, uh, we don't have officers, and so, you know, we, there needs to be a partnership, and I think they need to do more of their part. And, and, they're, and, and they're going to do it, I mean, like I said, one of the things is right now we're providing a service for no cost, and for us get to get them to pay one officer for two years, that's a win. If we can get that two for two, it's even better. better. But so well, it's, a, what it's, a, it's a win, but it, will, the, will the union say when that ends, then that officer can be let go? Of course not. So then what happens? We assume, and this happened, and I'll tell you, our fire department chief is here. The fire department had a grant for three, three firefighters for a few years that, that they hired. Guess what happened when that grant was gone? The, they, they had to take on that cost. What happens then? So, so again, we, we, can, we can make decisions now. And, uh, you know, I would like to make that decision so, or make, take that vote so everyone applauds us and says, oh, the council, look, they did a good job. They, they did something for our community, for our schools, yeah. And then the next council, four years from now, when they say, you know what, we don't want to fund it, then I just gave a problem to the council in the future and to the people in the future just the same way it's been happening and these are the cards we've been dealt. Well, so Mr. I just Real, want to make I mean, sure I, that... I don't, I don't want to see like I'm arguing with you, sir, but I just want to point out some clear, clear you know, um, uh, subject here. And one of the things is, is this. We are shorthanded as it is. So any officers that we get right now, I'm pretty sure in two years, we're not gonna lay anybody off. <laughs> I mean, cause as it is, you know, I, we could sit here and talk about being shorthanded 15 officers. And, and if we're gonna get two out of this or one out of this, I mean, I don't think that the city, the, the council or the city itself would lay off. If they're gonna lay off, they're gonna lay off everybody, not just okay. one officer. Thank you. Can we, uh, can we you, uh, yeah. Uh, Mr. Leal makes Real makes some uh, valid points, uh, but I think it should be up to you, Mr. City Manager, to negotiate this. And if I understand right, this time the school district is paying, right? But but then Mandy's making a point Sarah. about what happens down the road. Yeah. So we we we'll um, we'll bring that up. Okay. In our discussions, now, that we really like to be able to work on a long-term right. solution. Now, I'm and and uh, and uh, you're right. You know the school's going to be there 50 years from now. Exactly. And and issues are only going to get tougher. So so things we'll, we'll, we'll bring it up. Things can be brought up later, developed, mm -hmm. changed. Sure. Um, may I suggest? 
I, I feel very strained relationship with the school district. And I don't know whose fault it is it that's irrelevant. Uh, I think we should make steps to try to come together and be amicable and be on the same page and have a better feeling about each other's entities. So whatever you think might be a, a good way of doing that, I've known we've had joint presentations before or maybe we just get down uh, at a table and hash it out or whatever, okay? I mean, we got, we, we have to solve. Well, we're, okay. we'll continue to work with the school district to, to uh, add on down the road future, future mm -hmm. officers, SROs. Let's call for the question, please. Is there a motion to accept number seven? Motion. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Oro. Appointment of City Council Commissioner to the Housing Authority Board. Is there any recommendations? I want to make a motion um, for uh, this lady's. Uh, okay, wait a minute. I got it here. Uh, Let me find the number. What Imelda numbers? Romero. Second. Imelda. Second. Or third zip. You guys can't fight for the second. So. Okay, yeah. third zip. Oh, council, do you want to make sure? There's also an additional individual who did qualify, oh. but... Um, oh, and yeah. who is yeah, this person? Yeah, also. And yeah. Yvette Diaz, yeah. so I'll make yeah. sure yeah. that's the that consideration. Can you say the name of the other person? I Yvette Diaz. Oh. There's a motion for Imelda Romero, and there, there's a second. There, there is a second on the motion to accept mm -hmm. Imelda Romero as the applicant. Mm -hmm. All those All in favor? Aye. 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 Carried for Is she here today? No? No. Oh, okay. Is there any any closing remarks? Not future for me. agenda items? Aren't you lucky? Mr. Escobar, any future agenda items? No. Mr. Real? No. No. Come on. Mm. Thank you. No. I'll pass. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Hodge, any items for the future agenda? <clears throat> Let me go to my notebook here. I have about ten. No. Thank you. We're adjourned. Thank you. Thank you for coming.